frightens me to death. It fills me full of terror. Um, since I had COVID um, in March, April 2020, um, I have constant headaches. Um, going upstairs is, is just exhausting. Um, I have this cough. Uh, um, it's all the time. Um, I still have no smell, no taste. And I get hot sweats like I'm going through the menopause again, which I think really weird considering I was 40 when I went through the menopause and I'm nearly 60 now. Um, I'm so tired all the time. I don't sleep. I sleep maybe two to three hours a night. Um, and that is not a continuous sleep. I wake up because I think back. I dream about how I was feeling when I had COVID with the, the constant coughing and not being able to breathe. And um, I have a lot of anxiety, no energy. My, um, I was having CBT and occupational therapy and um, physiotherapy. And because of my lack of sleep and my lack of energy, because I'm not sleeping, they don't feel, they didn't feel as though they could help me because I couldn't participate correctly because I wasn't getting the sleep I needed to participate in those things that they were trying to do with me and for me. Um, so that's been now stopped. Um, I have dizziness when I'm lying down and getting up. Um, I haven't driven now for since the dizziness started. That's about a year. Um, I have no strength. It's really weird. I have to pass somebody a bottle to take the top off because I, I can't grip it properly anymore. It's I, I thought that was just me until um, I started speaking to people um, last week. I thought it was just me because I hadn't been out doing the things I used to do. I didn't realise that was a part of the symptoms of long COVID. Um, I don't go out if I can help it. I seem to hide away. I seem to have become a recluse more than anything now because I can't trust people or I can't trust not getting the COVID again. Because I know we can get it again. I don't know no matter how many jobs we have, you can get it again. And that frightens me, really frightens me to actually go through that again. was kind of a completely integrated multidisciplinary team they had all you know speech and language therapists who came and um talked to me about uh, well helped me with speaking and with swallowing and you know that kind of thing occupational therapists who came and and worked with uh, one of the things I, I suffered with was really bad pains in my arms um so they were with me with that physiotherapists coming two or three times a day to exercise and get me standing and walking. Um, so yes, um, a psychologist came to, to, you know, to talk through what the, what had gone on and, and whatever else. Um, so, so yes, that was, um, that was fantastic. Um, sometimes it was kind of like, just really can't be bothered. Um, but, um, you know, I improved. Um, now I look back, I improved fairly quickly um, under their help and guidance and whatever. I was walking down the, to the end of the ward, um, you know, within a couple of weeks, um, in actual fact. Um, the, so the end of the second week in January, um, I was well enough to be able to, to come home. I would like to, for someone to be able to say, Yo, well, that's okay, that's normal, this is what you would expect. But I think I don't think they... You know, anybody really knows exactly um, how long this can take to to recover from. Um, I don't know. 
I suppose it is very difficult. It's something that the new um, and yeah, things are still developing, and a lot of people are, are developing differently. I mean, even having a shower would send you back to bed. Trying to shower, couldn't do my hair, uh, couldn't do anything. I wasn't who I was. Let me just remind you all that before COVID, I was working full time, driving 20 miles to work, 20 miles back, doing overtime. I used to work with two screens in front of me and talk over the phone, solving, you know, like an account manager for a telecommunication company. Um, I'm one of the best sellers in the company too. I was um, volunteering, going to um, Her Majesty's prisons and praying for, with, with inmates. I was singing in a choir. I was uh, a traveller, loved cruising and running the home, you know. It was absolutely gorgeous, baking, cooking, looking after a family and grandchildren as well. And now I'm a fraction of who I used to be. Um, at one stage, uh, we just had a grandchild who was one years old at the time when COVID came. He thought my way of communicating was coughing. Mm. He thought when he saw me and I was coughing, it was a way of communicating with him. Because he'd never, he can't remember me talking without a cough. Do you want to see how Skester is? Some, there's a lot of mental effects as well. To, and also learning, because I know one of the things that we're taught is that um, we might not get back to where we were. And I think that's been really hard to accept as well. Because you just, you just think once you come out of hospital, you're just going to get better and better till you're back to that place where you are. But now, like, because it'll be two years in the end of April since I come out of hospital. But it's like uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought that I'd still be where I am now, you know, from the effects of it. But I guess, it's, yeah. And yeah. It, I think, I think as well, it's probably it's difficult as well. I think for the health professionals because it's probably all new to them as well. So I think sometimes, yeah, it's yeah. Well, in fairness, sometimes they will say that you know that it is new to them, and yeah, that they're learning as well. So I think it's you know, I, I guess it's I know it sounds probably selfish, but if other people had already been through it, they might not. You know what I mean? They might have. But I guess yeah, would be in the first wave. You probably, unfortunately, you're probably the guinea pigs. I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm.